I'm going to send back emails. Are these the ones that you, that you were telling me? Paul and Rima Turner are barristers looking for a second home in Italy. <laughs> As you can see, the Ivy. They have their hearts set on an abbey in the Lamarque region. But so far, they've been unable to see it. For this type of property, it's not easy to have it all to the no. Instead, they've been shown some unsuitable alternatives by local estate agent Monica Brunei. We might have a different um, understanding of the word phallus. <laughs> oh, my God. What they'd say in England, Monica, is they'd say, what you need is vision. They then meet Peter, a London likely lad made good, who reminds them why they should persevere. Turn around. Yeah. Now, listen. That's what you're looking for. It's noisy, isn't it? The region in the northeast of Italy is becoming ever more popular with British house hunters. Can you just pay a little bit more attention to the road and go a little bit more slowly? Paul and Rima are part of this rush to snap up a dream home at a bargain price, but they're only in Italy for a week. I've asked you already once. Would you want me to drive like Monica Bruner? Can you just slow down? They've been disappointed by the houses Monica has shown them thus far, and so with time running out, they've decided to add a second estate agent to their list. I'll go slow, and then we'll watch the pedestrians creeping past us. There's no pedestrians, but, I mean, look, he's not going fast. He can't go fast. He's got a moped with three wheels. That's not the point. <laughs> slow down, Paul. Let's go past him. Go on, there we go. Look at that. Whee! There we go. If you wanted to get to this appointment on time, you should have just got up earlier. We did. I got up earlier. It was you putting on your makeup. Lamarque covers a huge area, and it's been a two-hour drive to meet the new agent at this roadside cafe. Yay, we're here! Thank God, I got here in one piece. I'm in shock. Here shop. you go. We get out of the car. I understand that you've got. Unlike Monica, Sandro speaks no English, but keen to acquaint himself with all the British house hunters he can find, he's recruited the help of Mary to translate. Okay, no, we're fine, okay. thank you. Um, yes, I heard that you were interested in our area and uh, looking at some properties, restored properties. That's correct. Habitable, yes. habitable, habitable, I think okay. is what we can now, So putting our parameters, really, we don't mind um, if the property needs updating. So we just okay. get a company in to put in a new kitchen and bathroom uh -huh. and just paint and decorate it through um, Can I translate a little bit for... for oh, of course. Yes. I'm so sorry. Allora, tutto a posto. Praticamente cercano una casa 4 5 camere, e cioè qualcosa restaurato, poco lavoro. Non una... Tanto lavoro che hanno già fatto. Quindi, in fact, um, the agent has um, picked out some things that he thought you might be interested in on that. It's, it's very big un appartamento. And he said there's the just one apartment. And the reason to help is that you've got work taking place on the roof. Ah, uh, yeah, dude, it's hard to see. But, is that uh, to be restored? Uh, yes, yes. No. No. Oh, no. I like, it will be, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is just an apartment. No. Oh, no so. What about that? What oh, about that one? This is quite nice. What's that one? It's a casa mas. Which is the culinary one? Is that salt? Is that salt? Yes. Uh, yes. Oh, what a shame, because that, that yes. is actually quite attractive. Mm -hmm. No. 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 So there's there's some updating no, to do on that. No, that. That requires too much work. When you say to restore, are we talking yes, about... Yes, we're talking no. about everything. Oh, well, then there's no point looking at these. No. Put on that end, no. In the back. Yeah. Well, I think the only no. one that we really like is the one that you've sold. <laughs> <laughs> so, once again, Paul and Rima are not having much luck. Bargain properties in Lamarque seem to be getting harder to find by the day. One couple who were lucky, though, and bought their holiday home here a year ago are West Londoners Peter and Halla. We chose Marquet simply because Tuscany is now completely overrun by Brits. We had talked about it on the plane. We knew that Venice was off to the right. So what we decided was to turn out, <laughs> come out of Ancona, turn left, go half an hour, turn right inland, half an hour, and we ended up in Machalata. It's one of them places you can't help but like. 
Everywhere you go is a view. And there's warm people. Every single place you go, there's a panoramic view. It reminds me very much of California in the 1800s. There's a big gold rush out here at the minute. Because while these farms, these West Eco farms, are so cheap, people will come and buy them. But the farmers are catching on, and house prices have gone up a lot since we've been here. A hell of a lot. About 30%, they say. Yeah, about 30% they've gone up. With houses rising so sharply in price and in such short supply, Paul and Rima decide they need to widen their net and consider all options. It seems that the properties that we're interested in are the properties that actually need a lot of work doing on them. Okay. Do you do, some, do something called a turnkey job, which means that you arrange the builders, mm -hmm. we pay you a certain amount, mm -hmm. and then we pay you the rest mm -hmm. when it's completed? It's definitely possible. So, so you would establish what works so would have to be done, and the, the, the materials uh, needed, exactly the quality you'd want, what materials you'd want to use, and how much it would cost. Who would we sue? Questo è un problema. Sì, c'è un problema. Con l'impresa. Sono avvocati comunque. Facciamo avvocati. Vediamo casi ad avvocati. Said maybe to avoid any problems, we just won't sell homes to lawyers. That's probably easier. Probably sensible. See, wasting time coming out. So Sandro has at least gleaned something from his meeting, and while Paul and Rima can only dream about finding the right house. Peter and Haller are currently dealing with the realities of restoring their Italian retreat. A year on, and the building work is still not finished. They've come over now for the weekend and are frustrated by the slow progress. As you can see, the um, chimney breast there was supposed to be redone, and it's a bit of an abortion of a job there. They've stuck cement really nearly. Haller is upset. The top floor was meant to be finished by now, but the builders are still busy downstairs. The main problem is that the builders have been left unsupervised, with Peter and the family living in England. People have said, yes, but it would have been better had you been there permanently, but that's just not realistic. Coming backwards and forwards, telling builders, no, that's wrong, that's right, that's, it gets, it, eventually it gets to you, and you crack up, and you lose your temper when you shouldn't. All sorts happen. I think in hindsight, we've now realised we should be here, and there will be a point where I think Peter will just have to be here permanently to push them on but in the meantime peter and his family are determined to look on the bright side with the kitchen still unusable it's a good excuse to eat out at every opportunity i'm going on my way over now to lunch at montanari to see my old friend He's, uh, i always come to italy if i'm here for two days or two hours he always invites me for dinner always lovely guy Peter and Haller have their old friend Rolando to thank for finding them their house. They met while staying here at the Hotel Montenario. I came out the next morning and there was a chap taking cement bags off a lorry and putting them on a the wall. I took off my coat, walked over to give him a hand and he looked at me in total amazement and I, I was standing dressed to the nines helping him lift these cement bags off. So he, we, we finished the lorry and uh, he said, now I have to reduce your hotel bill. And I said, how can you do that? He said, I'm the owner. And he put out his hand and said, Rolando. I said, oh, hello, Peter. I said, we've come to look for our house. And he found us our dream house. He's done everything for us. And I don't know how we'll ever thank him. I really don't. Paul and Rima are now fed up with estate agents. They decide to take a leaf out of Peter and Haller's book and tap into local knowledge. They spend the afternoon walking the streets until a local bar owner tips them off about an 18th century townhouse she thinks may be for sale. But Rima's not sure it's going to be worth it. It's been a really hard day and it's just a bit of a waste of time, I think. Oh, well, we would have a difference of opinion on that one. But it so is beautiful. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is beautiful. Oh, well, just... I think the information that we got out of that one was very useful. It's bigger than I thought it would be. Yeah, it's massive. Out of all the houses we've seen, and whether it's a farmhouse, rubble, or overpriced bits and bobs, apparently this house is unique. It's, got a, it's quite big, and it's got a swimming pool that's actually inside the ground. It's got a courtyard with a five-year-old swimming pool in it. And it's, it's huge, and you can see, I mean, even just looking at the doors, well, at least we've got doors on. We've got windows. It's the end of a long day, and time to reflect on their experience of Italian estate agents.
There seems to be this strange thing which I've never encountered in England whereby they put photographs of properties on their websites solely to entice you to come to Italy which they're not in a position to sell and then when you get here those properties like the Abbey just vanish. don't exist they vanish their attitude seems to be that once they've got you out here you'll buy something yeah you'll be so desperate you'll buy something and how on earth you as an individual as a person who's coming from England how you could possibly know whether they've got permission to sell this property or not I don't know because I can't think of any questions that we could have asked no. that would have led to us being better informed no. right. than, than, than we actually are now there are things that, as I said as I've said all along the way that perhaps we could have done better but I, I can't see how they could produce properties out of thin air Paul and Rima have had enough of Italian estate agents. They've decided to go it alone, and it may be paying off. Last night, they saw a townhouse in Amandala, 20 minutes drive from their hotel, and today they've arranged to meet the keyholder so they can look inside. Oh, oh, look at the little dog. You're going to come and see the house with us? Come on. Past the building site. Wow. The brickwork looks great, doesn't it? It looks huge, doesn't it? Sit in anybody's room. Buongiorno, sono Paolo e mia moglie Rima. Buongiorno. Oh, this looks wonderful, doesn't it? Let's put ourselves in your hands. Paul and Rima are delighted to discover that this nobleman's house is one of the most historic houses in the region and was even blessed by a local archbishop. Oh, wow. Now, this is what I call wow. frescoes. Wow. That's Look proper frescoes, isn't it? How, how old? Um, has age, Paul? Da quanti anni? Questo qui possiamo parlare dell'inizio del 7. So, 1750. Cold Lee. Wow. Fantastico. Un altro camera bagno. Wow. Beautiful views. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. This is wonderful. Well, there's a swimming pool. Looks like a proper size swimming pool. But the view is amazing. The sun shining, the views, mountains over here. It's just amazing. Paul and Rima are feeling pleased with themselves that they managed to find this house without the help of Monica or any other estate agent. It looks as though their search may be over. This property is completely like what we're looking for. I mean, it's got character. It's beautifully preserved. Obviously, the owners have been very careful to not wow. destroy original features. So, yeah, so far, absolutely amazing. Look at this room. I promise you, look at this room. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah, it just seems to be from one room to the next, doesn't I know. it? It's all the painters. There's wow, Titian, look at them. There's Raphael. <laughs> the next hour is spent wandering through 24 rooms spread over seven floors. The numerous frescoes and wonderful views easily win them over. But it's the smallest room in the house which impresses Rima most. So this is? Oh, oh, so this is a private, this is like a private chapel. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. We have this in India. What's this? Confessionale. Oh, for confession. I've never seen anything like this before. Dove lo padre? The Virgin Mary. Bella. Paul, however, finds it all a little creepy. So how old is this? Fine Cinquecento. Cinquecento, 15th century. Exactly. Uh, funerario. Oh, that's for funeral. Uh, morte. Is that why this was made? Uh, mor per i morti. I think this is wonderful. Mm. I really do. It's the Indian in me coming out. <laughs> yeah. The cost of the house is 800,000 euros, around 530,000 pounds. It's more than their original budget. I have a very good feeling about this house. But Rima is definitely interested. Here's La Piscina. And it's a nice size. It's fantastic. It's a proper swimming pool. Yeah, got the deep end. But just when things seem to be going swimmingly, the caretaker drops a bombshell. 
there's a legal problem that could delay the sale of the house indefinitely. It was originally thought that the owner of this property, who lives in Rome, had a daughter who is mentally handicapped. That means that obviously the court has to approve any sale and make sure that she gets the right money for the property. But what I now understand is that there is another person who has come on to scene who was born as a result of a liaison with a servant. So it's all very complicated and probably isn't likely to be resolved for some time. So it all adds up to yet another slap in the face for Paul and Rima. Peter and Hella, meanwhile, have now returned to London, where they run several businesses, including Oscars, a video rental and coffee shop. They need to live here in England while their children are still at school. But Peter has started to dream about moving to Italy permanently and sees a business opportunity which could enable him to do it. If I go to Italy, to live in a couple of years, which is my real plan for the family, and I, and I get into the property market with Brits, English people helping them in, showing them, I'd love it. From his own experience and that of people like Paul and Rima, Peter knows he could be onto a winner because he'd do things very differently to the Italian estate agents. The way I've seen these uh, agents showing houses and that, and the prices, you're quoted one thing, and then you get to the house and you view it. And the minute you say, oh, I like that house, oh, up goes the, the price. Here, up goes the price, you know. <laughs> so that's not going to happen. If, if I was to get involved in property out there, and, and once I get the price, that's it. It doesn't go up, it doesn't go down, it stays at that. If someone bids you lower than that, fine. But I would like to get into property. There's a vast, vast market there. After two days spent unsuccessfully house hunting on their own, Paul and Rima have decided to set another appointment with glamorous local estate agent Monica Brunei. And she's managed to get an appointment for them to view the Abbey tomorrow. But today, she wants to show them another property that she's certain they'll love. This house is priced at 750,000 euros, so they're expecting something pretty impressive, especially as it's taken them over an hour's drive to get here. We love your cat. Things start promisingly when they discover the Italian owners are pet-loving barristers, very like themselves. Oh. I miss my rabbits when I see these little cats. Paul, have you seen this? Paul, look, 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 look. They've got their advocates. They live all in this side of the house. Wow. It's in the and it's better to live only in a small part to save uh, heat. Oh, right. It's very pretty, it's very cottagey. It's quite different, obviously, to the properties that we've been looking at so far. From what I gather, um, they live in a small part of the house because there's huge stone walls which it's good when it's very hot in the summer, but then in winter, I imagine it's very cold. The typical ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's lovely. It's I like it. It's curved. While Rima is being diplomatic with the owners, Paul is quietly seething about the price quoted by Monica. What's this then? It's a magic, but you be very careful. It's OK around here. The price that's quoted is 750,000 euros. It's a house that's 260 square metres with an 80 square metre loft. It's not very big. I thought no, it was going to keep walking down the middle. Yeah, otherwise you'll bang your head. I oh, know, I definitely will. We'll be looking at an abbey tomorrow, and an abbey with apparently 2,000 square metres, 8,800 square metres, which is already in occupation, um, and that, that apparently is around about a million. So for an extra £150,000, you can get uh, 500 square metres of extra property. I don't know how much of this is the real price and how much of this is just monitoring, just grabbing figures out of the air. So Paul clearly feels that 750,000 euros is excessive. But of course, Monica's first priority is to secure the best price for her clients. And anyway, in the Italian property market, nothing is ever really carved in stone. Negotiation tends to involve a little more flexibility than perhaps Paul is used to. I think my wife intends to have a conversation with her and um, ask her if there's another planet that we somehow travel to. Um, where everything is like three or four times its value. Or well, maybe we crossed over the border into um, San Marino or Tuscany, but nobody bothered to tell us. Oh, <laughs> is that for me? Excellent. It's easy for you. I've, I've never, never seen, seen a pomegranate this big. What's your name in England? 
pomegranate. In front of the owners, Paul and Rima managed to remain charm itself. But on the long drive back, their frustration over what appears to have been yet another wasted journey reaches boiling point. And rightly or wrongly, they're now disenchanted with Monaco. They originally came over to La Marque to view the Abbey, and only on the understanding that the 1.1 million euro price was negotiable. But the high prices that Monica now seems to be quoting for properties have got them worried. And they're in for yet another surprise. Well, that was a long drive, wasn't it? Yes. And that was it. And how much was that again? The, the price of yeah. the, the villa is uh, 950,000 euros. What, the one we've just been to see? Yes. 950,000? That's the same money as the Abbey. No, it's less. The Abbey's less, only a million. No, no. The Abbey is one million more. It's, it's one million and a hundred thousand. One hundred, uh, yes. There's no comparison between but the Abbey and the Abbey. The Abbey's eight, eight, eight. Usually the owner decides, and one of the reasons is the sentimental price. We've Nobody wasted our time. No. Wait, no, 250, 400,000 pounds, negotiate 300,000 pounds. It's possibly worth it. Pounds the 600,000 pounds, it's not worth it. Because 600,000 pounds is comparable to the Abbey. It's comparable to and the Abbey. There is no way, even just off the back of photographs, it's but not For comparable. example, the owner decides right, okay. the price. The fact of the matter is, we came here and we said, right, we'll be here whatever it was on Monday and it's Tuesday, and we're yours for the week to see all these old properties. That's the whole purpose. And what we've done is, we've gone to see a property that is just 900, they've got about as much chance of them, 960,000 euros, as there is of me flying, growing wings and flying around this square. They got more chance of their cats all, like, as you say, flapping, growing mm. wings and flying. Right. Listen, it's, it's, what we do now, we will speak again tomorrow. Number one property, the Abbey. We need to have a conversation about how much that price is going to move. Mm. I, I try to speak uh, again I'm with serious, you because at the moment no, I'm yes, not, so you know, right. at the moment yes. I'm not really happy about the whole thing. If I'm we go really to the happy. Abbey and they go, it's, uh, uh, I'm sorry, there's a mistake on the internet site, it's one and a half million, and there's a great TV camera that's going to film it and somebody in Britain's going to go, cool, that's lovely, then forget it. We checked out with you whether the price was movable on the Abbey. Negotiable. So, negotiable, because otherwise we wouldn't have come. But if that's not going to be the case, let us know tomorrow morning. OK, this evening I <laughs> hope I find uh, him. And uh, tomorrow morning I call you. Yeah. Yeah. OK, thanks very much. Yeah? Ciao. Thank you. Bye. Bye. With their concerns well and truly aired, Paul and Rima head back to their hotel. While Monica returns to her office to lick her wounds and ponder the cultural differences that have resulted in such a highly charged afternoon. In the next programme, Peter has a showdown with his architect. I want Saeed to finish, finish, finish. I pay, finish. But I'm not going to pay until he's finished. And the Abbey is finally within Paul and Rima's sights. But does Monica hold the keys to let them in? It's really tense in there. Um, Paul's talking Italian with the owner. Um, Monica's brought two friends with her, one of whom is her partner. And they are very aggressive. I think they're expecting trouble. And it all goes from bad to worse. Just as I was walking out, a woman came in and looked as if she was serving legal papers on us. A Place in Italy continues tomorrow. And later tomorrow night, stones are thrown in the glass house. 9.30 tomorrow night on ABC. At seven